In the North Coast, we have a lot of rainfall during the winter. That allows us to store that rainfall in the soil. That means we normally start the year off with a full profile of moisture here in the North Coast, which means that we don't need to irrigate right away. In fact, I like to allow the vines to extract that rain-fed natural moisture as much as possible before we even consider irrigation. And in so doing, the vines grow their roots out to explore a large volume of soil and extract nutrients from, from the soil without having to irrigate. One of our primary goals in manipulating water to the vineyard is to allow it to grow and then grow to a sufficient canopy size and then slow its growth and then eventually stop so that it can return its energy into the fruit. We do that by controlling the water availability to the, to the vine, which means manipulating the stress on the vine. And so that's why it's so important to monitor the vine stress and the soil moisture so that we have that whole ability to control that stress on the vine. There's something called the magic window. It runs from about two weeks prior to softening or verasion and through the completion of verasion. It's about a three, maybe four week period of time during the growing season. When we stress the vines, it actually stimulates the production of enzymes that are used in the production of flavor components and phenolic components in the fruit. By stressing the vines during that critical magic window, we actually improve wine quality by stimulating those enzymes. When we're looking at visual symptoms in vines, especially shoot tips, it's, not, it's important not just to look at one or two shoot tips, but to look at the collection of the shoot tips down a row, down the whole vine row, so we get the idea of what the collective condition of the vines are. The easiest and most effective way to tell how stressed your vines are, especially early in the season, is by looking at the shoot tips. So what I'm holding here is an actively growing shoot tip. And you see how the, the shoot tip here and the tendrils, if I kind of pinch them with my hand, are well past the shoot tip. That's an, indicating a very rapidly growing shoot tip in a plant that needs no water. Here's an example of a shoot tip that's slowing down a little bit. So you see that the shoot tips here, there's still some tendrils that are reaching past it, but a lot of these leaves are here that, that, are, that are growing, are starting to grow and catch up with the shoot tip. Or in other words, the shoot tip is slowing down and these, these leaves are growing and catching up with the shoot tip. This vine still doesn't need water, but it's getting closer. Here's an example of a shoot tip that's slowing its growth. You notice that there's no more tendrils growing past the shoot tip. You also notice that these young leaves are actually, if you push them up a little bit, they're actually extending to or a little bit past the shoot tip. And so here we're getting to a point where we're going to be irrigating this vine potentially in a couple of weeks. This is a shoot tip that's essentially stopped growing. You notice there's no tendrils sticking out. And you also notice that the shoot tip is really buried within all these new leaves. If you kind of run your hand up here, you don't even see the shoot tip. So this is the condition where the vine is ready to start irrigating. This is an example of a shoot where the shoot tip has not only stopped growing, but has actually died and begun to fall off. It doesn't mean the vine's in trouble, but it does mean that the vines need to be irrigated. This is a leaf parameter device. It's used to measure stomatal conductance. Stomata are leaf pores, and in grapes, they're found on the underside of the leaf. There are about 200 of these stomata per square millimeter on a grape leaf. The stomata are used to regulate water exit from the leaf. So when the vine's under stress, especially water stress, those stomata close, reducing the release of water from the leaf, thereby conserving moisture. This is a pressure chamber device, sometimes called a pressure bomb. It's used to measure leaf water potential. What is leaf water potential? It's essentially the suction or tension within the vessels of the plant. So when water is less available to the plant, it has to pull harder to get that moisture out of the ground. This is measuring that suction or tension within the, the column of water in the vessels. It's a cylinder full of compressed air. Actually, we use compressed nitrogen. 
gas that, that uh, goes into this chamber here. This chamber is where we put the leaf. This is a gauge that's displaying the pressure inside of this chamber. We use this gauge to determine how much suction is in the leaf that's in this chamber. When we measure soil moisture, it's important to measure not only at one depth, but at multiple depths. So this type of device that I'm holding in my hand is what's called a probe or soil moisture probe. It's got sensors all the way down from eight inches down to 48 inches. And we're measuring it continuously because this is an electronic device that stores the readings inside of it. This is one of our soil moisture probes installed in the soil. We install it once and leave it there 365 days a year and it's always collecting data. Notice how we've installed it near an emitter. So the emitter drops its moisture right near the probe. We can pick up the wetted plume that way. We install one of these in every block. We look for the weaker portion of the block to install it. If we irrigate to the weaker portion of the block, the rest of the block gets irrigated sufficiently. Another tool that growers can use to determine their irrigation needs is a service provided by the Western Weather Group. It's free for Sonoma County growers. We're here with Steve Harrow from Vino Farms and he's going to tell us about it. And Mark, we're standing in front of one of 12 stations that the Western Weather Group supplies to us. Two of the things that I use the, uh, the data for is frost control and irrigation scheduling. Uh, frost control it allows me to turn on the system at precisely the right time for the maximum control, but yet it also allows me to turn the system off at a time where we're saving water. Um, as far as irrigation, it's much of the same thing. Uh, it tells me uh, how, to, how much water to put on and when to put the water on. This is one of our stations located here in the Alexander Valley. Uh, it has a full suite of instruments on it. Uh, as you can see here, it has the te air temperature and relative humidity. Uh, powered by a solar panel here. We have solar radiation that's collected up here and our rain gauge up here to the left. Uh, and then everything is done via telemetry with a wind at the top there and beamed out of here and available on the web. Weather stations provide reference evapotranspiration, also called ETO, measurements for irrigation scheduling. ETO values are updated daily in the weather forecast for growers to make the best use of available water. ETO represents the evapotranspiration rate of a four to seven inch tall, cool season grass that is not water stressed. The Sonoma County Wine Grape Commission provides a weather web page for growers so they can manage their crops based on the changes in the weather. Near real-time data is available to Sonoma County Wine Grape Commission growers through web apps designed for smartphones. Sonoma County growers have an advantage in making informed decisions on what affects the crops the most, the weather. Thanks Steve for showing us this today. It's a great resource for Sonoma County growers to use, even on its own. I couldn't agree more. By using these few tips I've shown you today about measuring soil and about measuring the vines, we can not only save water, but we can make better wine. So now that we've started using more advanced techniques and really carefully monitoring the uh, water status of our, of our vineyard, we've seen multiple benefits. We've seen uh, smaller canopy, so we do less canopy manipulation. We don't have to remove as much of the extra growth in, in the vineyard. And of, of course, we've used, we're using less water now. And we're seeing better quality in the bottle because we get uh, more of the energy of the vine directed toward the fruit uh, during veraison and after veraison. So it's really a win-win for us.